You're listening to the Christian Post Daily Podcast. Today is Monday, June 24th. Vanessa Savage, a nurse at Texas Children's Hospital in Houston, alleges that two FBI agents intimidated her at home after she exposed Medicaid fraud involving gender interventions for minors. Savage claims doctors at TCH pushed gender-affirming care while neglecting underlying psychological issues and continued prescribing puberty blockers against official claims. Video footage posted by journalist Christopher Rufo shows agents Paul Nixon and David McBride questioning Savage. Savage asserts that doctors Richard Ogden Roberts and David Paul committed Medicaid fraud, which the hospital denies. Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton and GOP Representative Brian Harrison are calling for investigations. Rufo calls the incident a move to, quote, threaten and imprison opponents of transgender medicine. The California Senate has approved Assembly Bill 1955, prohibiting schools from mandating officials to disclose students' sexual orientation and gender identity to parents without consent. The Democrat-controlled Senate passed the bill 29 to 8, with opposition solely from Republicans. Proponents, including LGBT advocacy group Riverside Pride, argue the bill protects the privacy and dignity of LGBTQ plus youth, preventing forced outings that could lead to discrimination or family rejection. Sonia Shaw of the Chino Valley Unified School District and conservative groups like California Family Council and Students First California oppose the bill, contending it undermines parental rights and trust. The bill, now rebranded as the Support Academic Futures and Educators for Today's Youth or Safety Act, returns to the Assembly before reaching Governor Gavin Newsom for approval. Several Catholic organizations have temporarily blocked the Biden administration from enforcing a rule requiring them to provide accommodations for elective abortions in a case highlighting religious freedom concerns. Federal Judge David Joseph granted a preliminary injunction against the rule impacting entities like the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops and the Roman Catholic Diocese of Lafayette and Lake Charles. Joseph argued the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, quote, likely exceeded its statutory authority by including abortion in the Pregnancy Workers Fairness Act. Laura Wolkslavis of Beckett, representing the Catholic groups, hailed the ruling as a vital step for religious freedom, stating, quote, no one should have to choose between their conscience and protecting pregnant women. The government has 60 days to appeal. Arizona Governor Katie Hobbs has vetoed Senate Bill 1511, which would have required health insurance companies to cover detransition procedures for individuals seeking to revert to their biological sex. Hobbs informed Arizona Senate President Warren Peterson of her decision, citing concerns that the bill was unnecessary and could pose a privacy risk for patients. The bill, which passed both the Republican-controlled Senate and House, mandated health insurers to report statistics on detransition claims without including personal identifiers. Detransitioners like Chloe Cole, who sued her medical professionals after suffering severe mental health issues post-transition, highlight the ongoing national debate on gender transition interventions. Hobbs previously issued an executive order promoting access to gender-affirming health care and lifted restrictions on state employee insurance coverage for gender transition procedures. Pastor Robert Morris of Gateway Church in South Lake, Texas, faces serious allegations of sexual abuse. Cindy Clemeshire, now 54, claims Morris began molesting her in December 1982 when she was just 12 years old and asserts the abuse spanned over four and a half years. Leonardo Blair, senior reporter at the Christian Post, shared details on the Inside Story podcast, highlighting Clemeshire's insistence that she was not a young lady during the incidents, challenging Morris's description. Morris admitted to, quote, inappropriate sexual behavior from over 35 years ago and mentioned he has since repented and been restored to ministry. This unfolding scandal raises significant concerns within the Christian community about accountability and trust in religious leadership. You can listen to this episode of the Inside Story podcast with reporter Leonardo Blair by clicking the link in the show notes below. Americans have had enough of supporting companies that don't share our values. Tired of compromise? Switch to Patriot Mobile, America's only Christian conservative wireless provider. They offer dependable nationwide wireless coverage, giving you the same coverage you're used to while defending biblical values. Just go to patriotmobile.com slash Christian Post or call 817-286-4773. Get free activation with offer code Christian Post at patriotmobile.com slash Christian Post or call the number 817-286-4773. That link you can click is in the show notes below 
and the phone number as well. Our thanks to Patriot Mobile for sponsoring this episode. Vice President Kamala Harris recently met with cast members of Bravo's Queer Eye at the White House to discuss LGBTQI plus progress over the last two decades. Harris shared the experience on Twitter, thanking the cast for a, quote, meaningful conversation and their fabulous presence. The visit featured Jonathan Van Ness, known for advocating puberty blockers for transgender youth, who sparked controversy by referring to Harris as Madam President in a viral video. Critics like Daily Wire host Matt Walsh and comedian Vincent Oshana condemned the meeting, accusing Harris of prioritizing celebrity interactions over pressing geopolitical issues. Other detractors questioned the administration's focus and priorities amid global tensions and domestic crises. Author John Marriott shared insights with Focus on the Family on how Christian parents should respond when their children deconstruct from the faith. Marriott, a former pastor and researcher at Harvard University, explained that deconstruction often occurs gradually, where beliefs just evaporate or erode away. He advised parents to approach such situations with love and grace, emphasizing the importance of listening and asking open-ended questions, like, quote, how long have you been feeling this way, and are you still in process? Marriott stressed that showing continuous love and understanding, regardless of the child's faith journey, is crucial. He also recommended parents lead by example in their own spiritual practices and involve secondary authority figures to support their children. In a remarkable discovery, researchers from Humboldt University of Berlin and the University of Liege, Belgium, uncovered an ancient papyrus fragment in a German university library believed to be the oldest surviving piece of the infancy gospel of Thomas. The apocryphal text, written in Greek, details accounts of Jesus Christ's childhood. The fragment, dated to the 4th or 5th century, significantly predates the previously known 11th century version. Lajos Berkes from Humboldt University remarked, quote, The fragment is of extraordinary interest for research, highlighting its historical value and insights into the text's transmission. Gabriel Niochi Macedo from the University of Liege confirmed that the gospel was originally written in Greek. The fragment includes 13 lines describing miracles attributed to a young Jesus, often depicting behaviors inconsistent with canonical gospel teachings. Thank you for listening to the Christian Post Daily Podcast. We encourage you to follow the show in your podcast player of choice, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or third-party podcast players like Overcast and Pocket Cast. You can also download the Edify app for free and listen to all the podcasts on the Edify network by clicking the link in today's podcast show notes. We would also appreciate a five-star rating in Apple Podcasts and Spotify to help us reach a wider audience with the Christian Post daily podcast. You can also subscribe to our daily newsletter and get the top headlines delivered to your inbox by clicking that link in the show notes as well. Thank you again for listening to the Christian Post daily podcast.